Nerd Alert, we're doing a video here uh, at Electric Air where we're going to show you uh, behind the scenes uh, to show you all the cool stuff and how this place works. I've been here before and I've shown it to you a bit in B-roll, but never uh, with, back by popular demand, Sith. <laughs> Sith is here. Uh, of course he is. He works here. But so am I. And now you guys are here. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So, this is the receiving zone. That's actually, uh, you found the, the, the spot where everything starts. Um, <laughs> you can't build something unless you've got something to start with, and that is what we do with inventory. This is where we receive all of our stuff. Um, and we like to be pretty organized here, and being organized is really important when you're building something as complicated as a charging station, so you will notice a massive amount of stickers everywhere. Oh. Everything has a QR code, a yeah. label. We can track where anything is in this factory and look it up on an auto, you know, in an automated system and find it. And it's super awesome. I wish I had this in my house, honestly. Really? <laughs> and in case you guys were wondering and worried that they might not have any, they do have orange tubing. So relax, <laughs> relax about that. Uh, it does say audit, but I thought it said Advil, which would be way funnier. <laughs> Consider that for next and, time. And that sticker is actually really important. So quality of things out at site is actually super, super key. Because once again, you know, once things are out there, it's hard to go get to them. And we want to operate in the mode where, like, when we send something out to site, we want to act like we can't get to it. Because that really puts you in the right philosophy, right, for deploying and operating charging stations. So. <laughs> We get really, really particular about things that arrive in our factory that aren't up to snuff. And we put stickers on them when we say audit, and we make sure that those things go through quality control if we notice anything out of the ordinary. All of that happens here in this, in this area of the factory. So as a reminder, in case you missed the last video, uh, at SpaceX, they took the philosophy that you can't send a service truck to space. Make it work. Exactly. And this philosophy has carried forward. What happens after receiving? So, um, from there, it goes to kidding, where you'll find our um, Adele and Sue over there. And they, what, they're, what they do is they go and take all of the inventory um, and then they produce kits. Kits are basically how we organize things that we want to do to like go and build a sub-assembly, a part of the charging station. We produce all of the kits there. And then we take it out and we move it over here, which is the beginning of our of our um, uh, our factory like kind of assembly process. Mm -hmm. um, I see a power supply. I see a network uh, router. What else do I see? Um, so this is a partially assembled panel board, and this is actually kind of I'd say about half of the brain. Uh, at our charging station and you'll actually see things yeah you got it pretty much right there's power supplies there's a ups this is um kind of like a battery supply that keeps the um, it, it keeps things running in case the power goes out and that's actually critically important and then yes networking and that's all really important to make sure that we can connect to and talk to everything at the charging station mm -hmm. and importantly everything on this panel board makes sure that it, it's basically like think of it as like it's, it's the central brain for the charging station. So all of the individual charging dispensers that you see at our stations, they all talk back. They all phone home to this thing. Mm -hmm. And then this thing makes sure that everything is operating correctly. And importantly, this thing is out at site. Mm -hmm. it's, it's out there. And so if it can't phone home to us, you know, in the cloud, like phoning home to you know, something off-site, if it loses its internet connection, doesn't matter. You won't even notice as a driver. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, worth noting that while it can't function with half a brain, I still can. <laughs> so uh, what comes next? So we keep on moving. We go through assembly. We've got folks like Andy over here, hard at work, putting together a... Um, what is this? This is called... This is a DC combiner. DC combiner. Hmm. So for systems that use two inverters and have hardware on both sides of our rack, this sub-assembly combines the high voltage DC output from both inverters into a single high voltage DC output that connects to our best system. Wow. We use this specifically to, for sites that really require a ton of power. 
Um, and so this helps us get even more juice out of the battery. And this is one of the components that really helps make sure that we can get a ton of power out of the battery. Mm. Mm. Some of our battery systems can go upwards of 250 kilowatts. Mm. So those types of sub-assemblies get built and kind of like in, you know individually put together and then they will eventually get fully assembled here. And this is actually one of the racks that um, um, will go to a unit um, and will end up getting paired with a battery system and then sent out to site. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a really neat gantry system here and that's how we go ahead and, and install and assemble everything. Things just get kind of placed on mm -hmm. this ancillary rack. Mm -hmm. From there, and heavy, cool, interesting. They are quite heavy. Um, oh, here's a question for you: How much power do you have coming into the building? Here at this building, I think we have, I think we have approximately 1.2 megawatts <laughs> um, coming into this entire facility. Of that, we're probably the greedy bunch. We take uh, most of that, um, just in terms of um, power at this facility. We are normally. Um, kind of capable of pulling about 800-ish kilowatts. The nice mm -hmm. thing is we have tons of batteries here, mm -hmm. which means that we actually typically do not pull very much power at all, probably on the order of about 50 kilowatts, mm -hmm. even if we're doing high power charging on our 400 kilowatt charger outside. Mm -hmm. So we actually kind of, um, it's called dog fooding. It's where you kind of like, you, the thing that you sell, you go ahead and also just use the same product internally and mm -hmm. we do that here um, which is also a really good helpful test of the system that we produce with my first interview with ceo quincy lee uh, we met at an electric era location where he had to stop to charge on his way to portland <laughs> so he was testing Just the equipment testing his, using it and showing off is what he was and doing we do that all over the place with our with our our products the dashboards that our customers use to like look at the charging station and mm -hmm. monitor how things are going we use the same dashboards internally mm -hmm. all right cool so um, things now, get integrated there. This room we can't go far. We, yeah, I so can I'll just, poke uh, the camera I'll in. I'll poke the camera in so because we don't look. because it is electrified at the moment. <laughs> this is where you do stress testing. Yes, this is where we perform battery what we test call room. Mm -hmm. yeah, the battery test room. It's where we perform something called ATP acceptance test protocol and mm -hmm. uh, procedure. Sorry, and um, that is what we use to validate that everything works. That's it. I love these signs. Yeah. Isn't that great? Anything you can do to make people look at it and remember. Yeah. Um, okay. Am I allowed to show up the outside of a cabinet? Yeah, absolutely. What is this cabinet? Yeah, so. And uh, and who's this company? Why <laughs> I have not heard of them. So that tells me we're so running we work LFP with batteries. The, and yes. Based on the size, a good number of them. A good number of batteries. Um, this is the exterior of the, um, what Andy mentioned, the best. Uh, the battery energy storage system, and specifically the high voltage component. So this is the DC, just straight up battery pack. And it is a little bit dangerous to poke your head inside. That's one of the reasons why we don't, mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of power packed up behind this. Mm. Um, yes, even if the grid is off, it's holding, it's holding a all little that bit of juice. Yeah. And this thing gets paired with an inverter that you saw out there, right there on that mm -hmm. ancillary rack. Mm -hmm. um, and the two of them together provide a grid connected asset. And these, these are incredibly powerful. We use them predominantly to um, reduce the amount of peak power that the grid experiences, which we literally do here in our facility, um, but also out at our charging stations um, to, to keep peak power down, which reduces the electricity bill and then passes on savings in, in the form of the dollar per kilowatt hours that you're paying at our sure. charging stations. If you end up somewhere that's got uh, a high variable rate, the the retailer that owns the box mm -hmm. could end up paying a buck, buck fifty. In especially California, they get some pretty outrageous Crazy demand charge. So these are called demand charges where you are paying, it's a, it's a dollar per kilowatt and it's assessed on the maximum amount of power that you might have pulled over a 15 minute period in any given month. 
Oh no, so if you spike over it for 16 yeah. minutes, you're gonna be paying One of the earliest ones we saw was, there was this crazy charging station that we were like analyzing at in Maine that had no utilization. And then two people came and charged at the same time once, one day that month. And so the demand charge is crazy, right? And wow. so when those types of things happen, um, like it's, it's unfortunate for the charging station owner and they will end up having to pass on those costs to the drivers. Mm -hmm. And we really wanna prevent that. Like we really wanna make sure that the, you know, the charging station owner and then by extension the driver is always receiving the lowest levelized cost of electricity, mm -hmm. right? And because you need this box not just for that, you need it anyway you're getting more than one use out of it. Yes, and and so that's kind of, it's almost like the tip of the iceberg, right? Um, we use this thing for grid stabilization. Um, we make sure that we can stabilize the local grid. Um, and it, it does that naturally as a as a grid connected asset. So let me, let me see if I understand it right. I'm in my office and I don't have enough power and the heater kicks on or, mm -hmm. and, my GPU is like, whoa, what's going on? So this would be like that where you're actually making things smoother for your neighbors, for their devices, for their businesses it, and homes. and It can certainly do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we use it predominantly to reduce demand charges. Um, we can also use it to shift energy from one period of time where it's expensive to another period of time where it's cheap. Right. Actually, the other way around. Sorry. Right. Um, I mean, you could do it that way too. You could do it that way, but we, you know, we try to try to do it in the way that actually helps. <laughs> <laughs> helps who? Um, I mean, it depends who. We're, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, the way I look at it is with batteries. At some point, hopefully, cars will get in on this action too, where mm -hmm. they can do that. But uh, forget what you need for peak. If you didn't have rivers and dams, mm -hmm. you'd need rainfall every day to sustain your crops. Right. And there isn't rainfall every day with solar, with wind, with a lot of power generation, it's not there every day. This is one more dam in the watershed. Absolutely. And I think that when you, when you wanna build a resilient electrical grid, you have to have thousands of these things all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, it's really one of the foundational things. 90% of our sites, probably more, um, have one of these batteries at their at this station. So I've been talking with Electric Era for six months maybe? Yeah, I guess so. When, whenever your big day was, uh -huh. that, that the event here. And you guys said, we're gonna have this many stations going up, this many chargers. And now that time has passed, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, I think we've, and we're, we're activating, actually last week we had two stations. Two new stations last week. Right, and, yeah. and I think it's like, the pace is only continuing to increase. Um, so it just keeps getting, keeps getting better and better. And by I the end of the year- and busier and busier. By That's the end sure. of the year, you could be commissioning a handle a day. I think that that might be possible. Yeah, yeah. And remember, the end of the year is not that far away. Uh, I have a problem with the end of the year because then it means we're in 2026. Yeah. And when I was a kid and watched movies about the future, they didn't go that far. So I don't know what to expect. 2015 is where a lot of them stopped. Uh, but hey, I at least got my hovering skateboard. <laughs> Pretty sure that's how it works. Anything else we need to look at? Um, I think the last thing I want to show you, one, one final thing I think that would be useful to show you. Mm -hmm. Um, so real quick, I think one of the things that um, I wanted to point out is we, we actually keep a couple of uh, chargers um, here in the facility and we use this for internal testing. Mm -hmm. So this is actually connected to the, the battery system that um, was inside that room that we showed you. And that was um, like we use this to validate all of the software that we're pushing out to our stations on a weekly basis, actually. Um, so every week we run a test campaign against this charger, there's another set outside, and validate that the systems are all working like properly. And then we go and push that out over an over the air update to our charging stations. That runs on a roughly a weekly basis. Wow. So by the way, user friendly, 
you pull up, I don't know what, oh, never mind, I do know exactly what I have. And I imagine in the future, one of these will be Nax, and the other one will be Chatamo. Oh, oh, maybe. That oh, okay, picture maybe is now. now. You do I have mean, Nax have ones Nax, now. We have uh, half Nax, half CCS at some of our stations, and more and more of them are starting to switch over to that. Yeah, it makes sense. It is the future, and it is now. Uh, by the way, one thing I love about Electric Era is their app. They don't have one. What they have is tap to pay, or you can swipe to pay, or you can chip to pay, but you can use Apple Pay, you can use Google Pay, right? Pretty much Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, any mm -hmm. pay that works. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and or any card. You just tap it and you're done. We really wanted to mimic how easy it is to just get fueling at a gas station, right? Yeah. And I have, I have been, you know, on the receiving end of being within an EV, driving somewhere, realizing I didn't have great cell signal, and I show up to a charger and realize that I have to download an app to charge, and I spend 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get that app, and right. another 20 minutes signing up, and then loading a card, and then finally do I get to charge, and then, you know, it, it faults. And that's a problem too. <sighs> so we try to take all of that out, starting with make it super easy to pay, make it always work when you pay, and then make it work when you plug in and charge. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, you know how to fix it. And, uh, and if it charges slow, well, they've got something in the works for that. We've already made a video about their onboard native AI tool that should be able to help Definitely uh, should be able to help you. At some point in the near future. Do you think it's gonna to come to the point where it's gonna have the price on here? I know in parts of Europe they already yeah. have. Yeah, so I think, well, this right. one's in this free one mode. This one is in free mode <laughs> because, because as much fun as it is to charge the employees uh, for, their, for their work. No, but the idea is in, I know some mm -hmm. places I wanna say, Denmark or Norway, the gas stations now have signs that say. Oh, yeah. The charging rate. I think that that future is absolutely coming, and yeah. I think we'll be we'll be participating in that future as our as our customers start to kind of like buy into it. Yeah. Um, but I think good signage, all of these other ancillary things, are really things that we also try to pay attention to. And I think that'll be a win for the consumers absolutely. when they have an easier ability to comparison shop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I've cool. been very careful to not show the don't show things, but I will show them. <laughs> in October. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we got so, some fun stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah. Tip, tippy top secret, you guys. So in the comments, uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? How soon should I get Sith back to talk about more stuff? Leave questions and comments for him. I'll harass him if I must. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> you'll, you'll be so sick of me. And uh, everybody else, you know, like, subscribe. I can never get sick of you. <laughs> he says that. <laughs> they all oh. say that. <laughs> And guys, uh, yeah, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop. <laughs>